Good day. In this short video, we're going to show you how to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 on hardware that is not supported. So specifically, in our case, we're going to choose this Terraza, or Ter Teresa, whatever you want to call it, a W5 Pro. Uh, now, this machine we've already checked, and the Atom processor is an X5, and you need an X6 to upgrade. We're going to show you how to get around that. Now, historically, what you would do is spend hours trying to figure out how to hack the registry to get it to come up with some uh, setting that you need, or you would try to come up with some wrapper for the Windows 11 installer that gets around those requirements. However, we had found the entries we were looking for when we also found that somebody else had written the registry entries for us. So we are going to give them full credit, uh, this person right here, and we will post this on our site at www.urtech.ca. And you can see it gets around the uh, CPU check, the storage check, the RAM check, so on and so forth. Now, in this case, we know this machine is only short. Uh, it's an unsupported CPU, as we said, because it's an, uh, it's an Atom X5, not an Atom X6 Intel product. Let's roll through this very quickly. If you wanted to download Windows 11 and get started, you would go to uh, Windows 11 Media Creation Tool, do a search for that. And if you do it in Bing, strangely, you don't get a reasonable hit. So you get Tech Radar, blah, 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 very odd. So just head off to Google. And search for the Windows Media, Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. And the first hit is uh, what you're looking for. And you want to go to this one, the Windows 11 Media uh, Installation tool that will then allow you to download and install a little program that will then download Windows 11 and allow you to put it on a USB stick. Now that stick has to be at least 8 gig in size. You can see I've already got that done so we're going to save that time. So let's move on. If we run the installer from the USB stick, which we, we have right here, uh, it will come up with an unsupported CPU. So what you want to do is run the set of registry entries that we just showed you. Now before you do that, you're probably going to want to back up your registry. And in particular, what you want to do is back up the H key local machine system setup key. Now, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to assume you know what you're doing. If you do this, by the way, you're taking your machine in your own hands. You are gambling up a storm that this is going to work. And for the record, I don't know if it's going to work on this machine. I, you know, this is a uh, compute stick effectively and it is extremely low end um, but it does pass all the tests except for the atom so let's give it a shot and find out what happens so I've already put this uh, I've already well let's just do it again I'll double click on the registry entry uh, the, reg, uh, the reg file it says hey do you want to add these and you go yeah sure I do there we go now it's done now let's go run the Windows 11 setup I'm going to speed this up because this will be a little bit slow on this ancient well, it's actually not ancient, but on this very low power machine. And it's not horrible. Oh, wow. So much for speeding it up. A lot of people have said that uh, unchecking this makes their life better. Uh, apparently, there's some additional checks that go on. I have the distinct feeling that that is an urban myth, but let's leave it alone. I'm going to turn it off just on principle to make this easy. Checking for updates. Yay. So that's just checking to see if there's any Windows 11 installer updates that are critical. And as you can see, it's blowing right through it. It's going to work. Uh, this is the place where it would have choked before and said, this is not a supported CPU. Right here. So it's rolling. Now, in fact, on this machine, I'm happy to do a clean install, but this is actually going to do an upgrade from what I can tell. Okay, so there's a new, even though I just downloaded this, there's already a new Windows 11 setup installer. That was uh, that didn't take too long. As in, today is the very first day you can get it officially. We've been running it on our machines for oh geez, uh, well many many months since the first uh, uh, alpha, uh, first beta, I guess it really was, became public in the spring. Um, it's not much better than Windows 10, and we make a couple of changes to make it operate more like Windows 10. In particular, really can't stand having the uh, <laughs> the start bar centered and having things bounce around so uh, we move it back while we're waiting for this I'll show you what this is running it is running Windows 10 
21 H 1 as in the most current version of Windows 10 and this machine well we're just while we're killing time here I'll show you it's it's not the most powerful machine on earth but it does work so you can see it's got four CPUs got four gig of RAM uh, and it has 64 gig of, uh, of disk uh, those are all of the minimum requirements that meets the minimum uh, spec. What doesn't meet the minimum spec is the Atom X5. Okay, so check this out. This PC does not meet the minimum requirements, but we can get you around it. So you just click accept, saying, you know, could be a bad idea. Hell yeah. Okay, now in my case, I really don't want to I really don't want to keep uh, personal files and things. I really want to wipe this machine out. But in your case, you probably just click install. In mine, I'm going to select change what to keep, and I'm going to say nothing. Just toast the whole machine. Okay, finally, let's go with English US. And home country, in my case, is Canada. And yet again, you still can't type a letter in this. You've got to scroll. That sucks. They really should have fixed that, but okay. English Canada, uh, you know what? I don't care, that's fine. And the time zone is correct, next. Okay, so there's a problem. Odd, let's click next. Okay, so this is its third attempt to solve a problem by downloading something from the internet. And probably a driver would be my guess. Uh, but it's uh, failing, so I'm going to try this one more time and then we're just going to give up. Wow, it's working. Well, color me surprised. Hee haw! So persistence pays off. Just let it go through those three attempts that it needs to go to the internet and get uh, probably a driver. All right, let's click next. Let's see if we can just type a letter here. I can't, so I'm typing letter C for Canada and I get nothing. So I'll just use the mouse. Sure, US keyboard's fine for me. No, nope, I don't have a second keyboard. In case you're wondering, yes, those graphics did chunk in a bit. You'll notice how smoothly this is spinning, but that was a bit chunky, which is an indication, I think, of uh, either the CPU is maxed or the uh, video card is maxed. Wonderful. Let's call this Atom 1. So for fun, I'll say this is for personal use. Because I want to see how easy it is to get around the, having a Microsoft account. Used to be, as in, in the betas, used to be impossible. So click sign in options. Offline account, oh, you can do it. Okay, so they have allowed it. And I'll create an offline account. And it's gonna say, you know, that's a stupid idea. You really need to have a Microsoft account. No, that's okay, thank you. My name is you are tech. Password, I don't want a password for this. Ah, there you go, you can skip it. In the betas, that was not possible. Uh, sure, I'll let Microsoft, so this is going to go through and ask a whole pile of questions that used to be on single page. And now you have to answer them separately. And the reason for that is uh, to meet GDPR and other privacy regulations. So because I'm beta testing, I'll give Microsoft access to everything. And for the record, I probably would anyway, but let me rephrase that, I will do that anyway. Okay, that was smoother than what it was in the past. This is still zipping around nicely. So I think we're going to have an actual usable machine, which is pretty amazing when you consider 
It's this. <laughs> it's a stick. Yeah, baby, it's working. Well, there it is. All right, so let's make a couple of changes here. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is right click and select taskbar settings. And I'm gonna move this to the left because I really hate this thing bopping up and down, getting larger and smaller. I, want, I don't want it moving around. So this is something that just drives me crazy. So I believe it's in taskbar behaviors. Yeah, from center to left. Uh, so that's much better for me. Things now don't bounce around down here as, uh, as we add things in. The one feature that is not there, which will make me go back to Windows 10 or more likely get a third party utility, is that I am unable to turn off the combine feature of the taskbar. So if I've got 17 different uh, Microsoft Edge applications running, it shows one and then I have to move my mouse down and select them. It's a pain. Anyway, that's not really relevant for this. Let's move on to more interesting stuff. Let's right click on this and select device manager and see if everything is installed or if there's some hardware that still has some problems. Look at that. Everything came up. No kidding. Okay, let's go to task manager. All right, so task manager, I used to just right click. You can't do that anymore. So uh, now I'll just press Control Alt Delete. Go to Task Manager, and uh, it's the same old thing, by the way. Nothing shocking here. Let's go to Performance, Logical Processors. I don't see it's uh, it's not any more pinned out than it was under Windows uh, 10. Uh, the CPU will quiet down in a minute. Wonderful. Let's take a look at some of the devices to make sure that they have been installed uh, correctly. Okay, it's got the HD. Yep, that's correct. Of course, it's seeing the atoms. And yeah, I think that's really all I'm worried about. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now I will go to Windows Update all the same, so I'll just click Start and type Update. And I'll just go to Check for Updates directly. Uh, so there's a uh, Defender update. Let's download those. Okay, so those updates are running. Let's take a look and see if this is activated. I'll click System down to activation activation state looks green windows is activated with the digital license so I took my windows 10 license and we're on our way now that means that this little Teresa Terraza whatever you want to call it w5 pro is actually functioning just fine at windows 11 now something to keep in mind that might not be the case in the future so there could be security updates that uh, somehow don't work because of uh, having the, the, the wrong CPU. Uh, there could be, there just could be problems. So this is, you know, taking your life in your own hands here uh, to do this uh, as we have done it. But, um, you know, overriding the uh, limitations that Microsoft has set. So I'll put a review in the top right hand corner here of what's new in Windows 11. Uh, but the, the long and the short of it is it's really little more than a skin on Windows 10. There are some changes, in particular the store, which I won't show you because the new cool new store features aren't working yet. And you think, why is the store that interesting? Well, because you're going to be able to run Android apps. And that is a big, hairy deal. Now, Microsoft has not said that they will not expand the store when it's running on Windows 10, and I fully expect they will. But as it stands now, it's a Windows 11 feature that uh, Windows 11 will run Android apps, which is pretty amazing. Okay, let's uh, just take a look at the version here. Yeah, so it's uh, Win Microsoft Windows 21H2, uh, which is Windows 11, it's Pro. Okay, we're gonna do two more things and then call it a day. First thing, let's uh, look at the hard drive and see how much space is left. Always a concern for people with tiny hard drives like this one. This is a 64 gig. Not that much, that's about the same as Windows 10. Windows old there. It's not very big, just 2.6 meg. So that's the first thing, was to see how much of the drive it chews. Secondly, I wanna restart it and show you 
how long it takes. Uh, let's uh, take a quick look, a uh, quick run here. So restarting, and once again, it's on without doubt the least powerful machine you will ever run Windows 11 on. In this case, it's an Intel compute stick. This is uh, made by uh, Teresa W5 Pro again, and it uh, is running an Atom X5. It has a 64 gig uh, SSD, although a tremendously slow SSD, but still an SSD. And it has four gig of RAM. And obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but it, it is running integrated Intel HD video. It does not have any discrete uh, video. So there's very little less powerful than this that is still in use today. By the way, in case you're wondering why this machine exists, it's because it's great for things like digital signage or anything that needs to be just sort of left running. So in my case, I did use it for digital signage. I used it to run PowerPoints in a loop. I've used it to run websites. I've used it to just display graphics in the background. I've used it for all kinds of little tasks like that. Great for elevator lobbies and things like that. Well, that was not hideous at all for a reboot. Not hideous at all. All right, we would really appreciate it if you would click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. We do this kind of stuff all the time. If you have any questions, put them in uh, the comment section below and we'll get back to you, usually within a day or so. Or you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.